Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have, I appreciate it. As always guys, let's get into today's video because I think you're going to find it very interesting on the topic that I'm trying to hit on. So let's get into it. So in this video, I want to talk about uh, barrel twist. Now you may have heard me talk about it before in prior videos on all about air guns or STKO. And why it matters with air guns because you know you get uh, a twist rate that doesn't like any pellets you're going to have a hard time finding an accurate pellet an accurate and precise pellet for it well in this video i have a curveball that i'm throwing in there because i don't know the actual rifling twist for the for the new pcp air rifle that i got and a lot of you may know about it already but here it is sitting in the bog pod the Crawl Arms MP03 22 cal. As you may know, I'm a 22 cal guy. I like my 22 cals. And this is the example rifle used in this video. And a lot of you may or may not know, seen the video on STKO as to how I found the pellet straight out of the box without even shooting the rifle. And in this video, I want to share with that information with you on how I did it. So again, I think you're going to find this very interesting. So a lot of you air gunners out there may know already that the higher end guns, you know, come with a published twist rate or you can buy separate barrel kits to get different twist rates for different pellets or slugs. And there's a reason for that. Uh, not too many people go into in-depth detail as to why uh, you need different twist rates for different projectiles. And come to find out, it's not so much a weight issue, it's more the length of the contact bearing surface, which I'll show diagrams in here in the video itself, telling you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, again, I don't know the twist rate of this crawl, uh, but I can tell you from what I've tested and what I've seen, again, I've only, I didn't even shoot a pellet out of it before finding the exact pellet for it right out of the box. Uh, and I'll tell you how I did it. So what I did was, was I pushed a pellet down the barrel itself. I manually pushed a pellet down the barrel and this is choked by the way. It even says in the product description online that this hot sun or crawl, excuse me, is choked. And I could feel the choke in it. But the point is the barrel likes a shorter, mid-level 22 cal pellet it doesn't like the long pellets and it doesn't like the shorter pellets now what that means is typically the longer the pellet the more weight but there is some certain exceptions to that rule now with that said i tested a few different pellets recently even though i found the pellet for it already i want to share with you as to why this happens now the pellets I'm going to list off that I tested at 35 yards were the H&N Barracuda Match 21.14 grain, the Crossman Hollow Point 14.3 grain, the H&N Field Target Trophy 14.66 grain. And I'll show you exactly which pellet was which. So now guys, I'm going to show you the footage of shooting this rifle at 35 yards with those exact pellets and the point of aim didn't change my crosshairs was dead on bullseye and you'll see what I'm talking about
Okay, just to do that pellet testing for you guys, just to show you what those groups were. Uh, you can see that the H&M field target trophies and the Barracuda match were all over the place. And there is a real reason for that as to why that is happening. And the Crossman Hall points were pretty decent. I mean, a half inch or so, you know, at 35 yards, which ain't bad for a less expensive pellet for one. Number two, they match the barrel pretty close. I mean, they're not spot on, but they're pretty close that match the barrel. So again, I'm going to show you guys the diagrams that I've made and showing you these pellets. So what I did was, is I measured the length of the pellet itself. So the first pellet was the H&N Barracuda Match 21.14 grain. And the, the bearing surface from the very tip of the head to the skirt was 6.5 millimeters. So that is 6.5 millimeters that actually contacts the bore and spinning. And in the diagram, you can see that the actual rifling marks were straight in line with each other. And what does that mean? That means there's no spin. So when that pellet is going down the barrel, it's just rotating the actual rifling of the barrel itself. It's once it leaves, you know, it's not spinning like it should. And it's starting to destabilize. And as you can see that at 35 yards, that group was not that good. I mean, it was well over an inch. So next up was the Crossman hollow points. They measured from the head to the skirt, the contact bore area, five millimeters, which is pretty close in this rifle, guys. As you could tell, 35 yards with those pellets, a half inch group, that's good. That's really good, actually. And they shot okay. I mean, I'm not complaining. That's, I'll take that for, uh, you know, $6, $7, a 10 of 500 pellets. I'm not complaining. But you can see where the rifling is almost lined up. Uh, they're not perfect. It should be, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about when I show you a picture of the JSB 1589 grain pellet, which I found to be the one for this gun. But the rifling on the Crossman hollow point is just a little off. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I show you the JSB 1589 grain. The, the rifling marks on the head and the skirt has to be at the right angle. You get too much of an angle, it's overspun. You get too little of an angle or a straight line, it's not enough spin, which happened with the H&M Barracuda match. So again, the Crossman Premier hollow points were okay. Uh, next were the H&M Field Target Trophies, 1466 grain, and the bearing surface on those measured 4.75 millimeters, which again, real short pellet on the bearing surface contacting the rifling and you can see that the actual rifling marks were a diagonal apart from each other the top and the bottom marks which is too much spin for that little of a pellet and the reason why I'm tilting my hand this way is because right hand twist the rifling goes clockwise down the barrel and that's the way that the marks on the pellet should be but too much or too little again can mean destabilization or no stabilization uh, too much spin or no spin not enough spin okay so now the finale the last pellet that I want to show you guys which was the only pellet that I shot through this out of the box if you guys watch that video on STKO when I did the out of the box impressions of this rifle pretty much the 1589 grain pellet was insane and it's because the rifling marks from the head to the skirt which measured 5.5 millimeters, the contact area, the head and the skirt were just, the angle was minimal. It wasn't straight, but you want to look for that minimum angle. You don't want too much of an angle, the minimum angle. You want it to be off just a little bit. I mean, I eyeballed this, guys, and I wear contacts, and um, I'm set up to have 15-15 vision, but I barely seen it, and I barely got it on uh, camera, as you've seen a picture of it, to show you exactly what I'm talking about. And these pellets through this gun, the 1589 grain JSB, do not disappoint. I'm gonna show you a group at 50 yards, guys, that puts all these groups in these guns, in this gun, to shame. 50 yards with the JSB pellets. Out, and this was out of the box. Let me show you that now.
So guys, I appreciate you watching. I'm going to end the video here, and I hope you got something from this video as to why you may or may not have some pellets that shoot good or shoot bad in your gun. It's because of the rifling twist. But then again, it's how much angle from the head to the skirt of the pellet and the pellet length itself matters. So, you know, overspun pellet, pellet's too short, you know, too long of a pellet, not enough spin on the pellet itself. It's going to destabilize downrange, guys. And you get the right one, you have the angle correct on the pellet head and the skirt, you see exactly what I'm talking about. The, sh the gun and the pellet combination shoot lights out, guys. Precision, accuracy is spot on. So anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed this video as always. And I hope I could hit on the topic of rifling, barrel twist. Again, we'll see you on the next one.